Hello and welcome to our first discussion on our new show called There is no wealth like knowledge. I'm Kashi Deosiku, your host today, and my first guest is Mr. Taita Sipumbu, a legal practitioner based in Bentuk. Our discussion today is about the Orange River boundary. Mr. Ipumbu is going to share vital information and express his personal views on this subject matter. According to Mr. Ipumbu, some years ago, there were discussions between the government of Namibia and the government of South Africa on the boundary of the Orange River. It appears that such discussions were inconclusive. Therefore, he is going to elaborate on this topic. Welcome, Mr. Ipumbu, to this program. They say sharing is caring. Before we go deep into the discussion, could you please explain in brief what the Orange River boundary is? Oh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Siku. Uh, the Orange River is uh, one of the international watercourse which um, originated from uh, Lesotho. Uh, it, it transcends or it goes through um, South Africa, in particular the, the then Transvaal province, which is uh, also known as, as Hotek. And uh, as it reaches uh, the boundary between Namibia and South Africa, it turns and it follows the boundary uh, up to the Atlantic Ocean. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, are you aware about such talks of the Orange River? Yes, I'm very much aware about uh, the talks of the Orange River boundary, which started uh, in the late 90s. Uh, but the, the discussion halted and it resumed. Uh, uh, in 2004, February, um, where um, the two governments, i.e. the South African government and Namibia, and Namibian government engage each other on, the, on this subject matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which ministry was spearheading the discussion of this matter? The Ministry of uh, <coughs> Foreign Affairs then, which is now called in, in the Ministry of uh, International Relations, uh, was responsible to coordinate um, the discussions on the Orange River boundary. Mm -hmm. Were you also part of these discussions? And if so, in what capacity were you involved? Yes, I was part of the discussion um, in 2004, um, February. Um, that time I was at the Ministry of Justice, uh, but strictly speaking, I was not an employee of the Ministry of Justice. I was um, recruited or employed uh, to save uh, SADC, in particular the SADC legal sector, which was coordinated by the Ministry of Justice in the, the government of the Republic of Namibia. Um, I I came to I, I became involved in this matter uh, because of my experience in negotiating international agreement. As I said, I was not strictly speaking working for 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 the ministry, but I was just uh, in the ministry uh, because the ministry was was. Uh, was hosting the SADC, the SADC legal sector and institution of, of, of SADC. So I, that's how I, I, I get involved uh, in the discussion uh, at the national level. There were uh, the preparations at the national level. Uh, I attended those uh, discussions, uh, preparatory discussions at the, at the national level uh, on two occasions and uh, I was part of the delegation that went to meet um, our South African counterparts in, in Cape Town, uh, South Africa. That was 
uh, February 2004. Okay. Uh, I think at the beginning you gave us an overview of the origin of the Orange River. So now I'd like you to give our audience again an overview of the position of South Africa and the position of Namibia on the river. Um, the, there are two different positions which are diametrically opposed to each other. Let me start with the, the Namibian position. The Namibian position is based on the constitution of the Republic of Namibia. Uh, if you look at Article 1 of the constitution of, of Namibia, it talks about the establishment of the Republic of Namibia and the identification of the boundary. Article 1, sub 1, it says, uh, the Republic of Namibia is hereby established as a sovereign, secular, democratic, and unitary state founded on the principle of democracy, rule of law, and justice for all. Uh, if you go to sub-article 3, it, talk, it talks about uh, the organs of the state, that the organ of the state is the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Now, very important is Article 1, Sub 4, which says that the territorial or the national boundary of the Republic of Namibia shall comprise of the whole territory which is recognized by the organs, by the international community through the organs of the United Nations and it shall consist of the enclave, the port and harbour of Wallis Bay and all the offshore islands and the southern boundary is extended to the middle of the Orange River. Now that phrase is very important. The south, our southern boundary is extended to the middle of the Orange River. That is very crucial. That is the position of Namibia. Okay. Now, the, the position of South Africa is quite different in the sense that uh, South Africa provides that the the, the, the northern boundary with Namibia is on the northern bank of the Orange River. If our position is the middle of the Orange River and the South African position is the northern bank of the Orange River, it means that we are not at it, we are not speaking the same language. There is a dispute there. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, which position do you think is correct? Namibia or South Africa position? Well, um, I wouldn't... It's, it's, not a, it's not an easy answer to provide that uh, the South African position is correct. I wouldn't also say the Namibian position is correct just because I'm a Namibian, but uh, you see, the whole thing is, <coughs> is, is regulated by uh, a treaty called um, uh, Agro-German Agro -German Treaty of uh, the 1st July 1890. Uh, sometimes uh, this treaty is called Heligo, Heligoland Zanzibar Treaty of 1890. Now, perhaps to discuss why we say the boundary between Namibia and South Africa is regulated by a treaty which was 
discussed by German and Britain. Why do we have two countries in Southern Africa which whose boundary is regulated by a treaty discussed and signed by foreign powers, mm. namely Britain and German. Now, you must understand that uh, uh, in 1884, there was this Berlin conference. And uh, thereafter, the, the treaty was negotiated between the two countries, Namibia and Southwest Africa, Namibia. And there was a German executive by the name Dr. Krauss. Sorry, not Krauss, but Dr. Crowell. Mm -hmm. Dr. Crowell is the one who represented um, the government of Germany, while uh, Sir Percy Anderson represented the government of Britain. So the, the negotiation started in Berlin around um, 1886, 87. And it was concluded in Berlin in on the first July eighteen ninety. And that is the discussion which led to the conclusion of this very important um, agreement called Anglo German Treaty of the first July eighteen ninety. Now, you must also understand that uh, uh, German occupied Tanganyika before Tanganyika became uh, uh, Tanzania, while uh, the British were occupying uh, South Africa. Now, what led the German to engage the, the British was their interest in an island called Heligoland. The, Brit the, the German wanted, who were in Tanganyika and Pemba and Zanzibar, they wanted to give the island of Zanzibar to Britain in exchange of Heligoland, because Heligoland is close to them in the North, North Sea. Like the North Sea is the, the sea uh, between the United Kingdom and uh, countries like uh, uh, Denmark, France, and so on. So you will find a, a, um, an island called Heligoland. So the German wanted Heligoland and give Zanzibar to Britain. Mm -hmm. So during that negotiation, they now exchanged uh, this island and uh, Britain took Zanzibar and uh, the German took Heligoland. Mm. And then that's why uh, this um, Agro-German Treaty sometimes is called Heligoland-Zanzibar Treaty, sometimes it's also referred to as uh, it's, it's, the, these names basically they are used interchangeably, so they, they are talking about the same uh, same agreement. Okay. Yes. So now, <clears throat> what happened is that now what that agreement, that agreement by the British and the who were the, the colonial power in South Africa and the German who were the colonial power in uh, Southwest Africa, Namibia uh, later on. So it it sets the boundary on the northern bank of the of the river meaning if you are coming from namibia at the 
low water mark. The low water mark is, you can say, it's where the water ends. Mm -hmm. That is the northern bank of the Orange River. Mm. According to the Anglo-German Treaty of 1st July 1890, mm. that is the boundary. That is where the boundary is. Mm. As I said, opposed to the position of Namibia, which says that the boundary is the middle of, of the river, of the Orange River, meaning you have to walk mm -hmm. up to the middle of the river, mm -hmm. and then that's where the boundary is, according to Namibia. Well, according to South Africa, the, the position is quite different. Here's a dispute. Okay. It's a legal dispute. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Bumbo, is there any law which governs or regulates the boundary between Namibia and South Africa? Yes. Um, <coughs> my brother, uh, the, the issue of uh, Orange River is quite complex uh, because um, in international law there is a, three, a, 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 a principle called uh, ut positetis juris mm -hmm. is a Latin word which basically means keep what you possess under the law. Keep what you possess under the law. Ut positetis juris. Mm -hmm. Now that is a very important legal principle in international law. How do you apply that principle? to the territorial boundaries. Mm. If you apply that principle, it means respect the boundary as you find it at the time of independence of that given countries. Mm. That is number one. And the, the doctrine or the principle of UT Posidetis Juris, it became part of our national law. Mm -hmm. Now, I must also um, tell you that uh, in uh, 1964, yes, uh, that was just a year after the Organization of African Unity was uh, established. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1964, uh, there was a first um, assembly mm -hmm. of heads of states and government of the Organization of African Unity. It was held in, uh, in Cairo. Egypt. Mm -hmm. The meeting uh, started on the, I think on the 16th until, no, 17th until the 21st of uh, July 1963. Mm -hmm. uh, it was attended by heads of states of the African Union. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, in Southern Africa, the, the countries that were independent that time it was only um, Tanzania, which got independent in, independence in 1962. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Malawi, mm -hmm. which got independence, I think, on the 6th of uh, July, 1964. Mm -hmm. uh, those were the two countries in Southern Africa mm -hmm. that were represented at that OAU assembly of heads of states and government. Mm. Because remember, uh, that time, when the, when the assembly came, mm -hmm. Malawi was just 10 days independent mm. from, from its independence. So the, there was a very important declaration made by the heads of state. It's called the Cairo Declaration. Basically, uh, the Cairo Declaration reinforces or it emphasizes 
the principle of law that I have told you about, the UT Posidetis uh, Juris. Mm -hmm. The Cairo Declaration uh, emphasized that the newly independent states, mm -hmm. who, which are members of the Organization of African Unity, it must respect the boundary as they are found at the times of their independence. Now, that, that was the OAU regime by then. Mm -hmm. Then came 2000. In 2000, there was a transformation from uh, the Organization of African Unity to the AU. Mm -hmm. um, the, <clears throat> the, uh, the AU was established by the Constitutive Act, the Constitutive Act of the African Union, which is equivalent to um, a constitution of the Republic. You can say it's a constitution of, but, but in, in, in the AU language it's called Constitutive Act, mm -hmm. uh, which was signed and adopted uh, by all heads of states of AU mm -hmm. uh, in 2000. Mm -hmm. Article 4 deals with the principles. Mm -hmm. Articles 4 provides again that uh, member states of the African Union must again respect the, the, the boundaries as they are or as they were found at the times of independence. Now, <clears throat> Namibia has signed the Constitutive Act of the African Union. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, Namibia has ratified that same legal instrument, namely the Constitutive Act of the African Union. If Namibia have ratified that, mm -hmm. it means the Constitutive Act of the African Union mm -hmm. became part of our law. And what does that, that mean? It means you have ratified an instrument which contains a very fundamental principle that you must respect the boundaries, or the colonial boundary for that matter, as you found them at the time of independence. Mm -hmm. Now, let's <coughs> speak this in relation to the Orange, orange River boundaries. Mm -hmm. So Orange River boundaries, if we found it, if we found, if at the time of independence on the 1st March 1990, mm -hmm. the boundary is where we found it. Mm -hmm. So we must respect it. We must respect it. Remember, <coughs> remember, uh, Article 1, Sub 4 of the Constitution, why is it referring only to the southern boundary? Why is there no reference in the constitution to our eastern boundary between Namibia and Botswana? Northern boundary between Namibia and Angola? Why? Remember, King Mandume, mm -hmm. history tells us that his palace mm -hmm. was not south of the current boundary. Mm -hmm. No, history tells us that the palace of King Mandume, it was north of the current boundary, mm -hmm. meaning it was beyond mm -hmm. at a place called Oihole. Yeah. Oihole, it's quite a number of kilometers from the Namibian Angolian borders mm -hmm. in Kunene province. Mm. Why is it that our constitution does not refer to? 
to the boundary between Namibia and Angola. That okay, fine. Let's also approach the Namibian, uh, sorry, the Angolan government, mm -hmm. so that we move, we physically move our boundary mm -hmm. from where it is now mm -hmm. to the place where King Mandume's palace was mm -hmm. before he was killed by the Portuguese colonialist. Mm -hmm. So I believe the reason why the, the reason why the uh, our founders of the Namibian Constitution included that reference, mm -hmm. which is our southern boundary must be extended to is extended to the middle of the Orange River. It's probably mm. they thought um, that uh, this is a matter which um, must be discussed with the incoming um, ANC government. Mm -hmm. And uh, being um, a nationalist uh, movement, uh, the ANC may understand the situation of, of Namibia better than the National Party government by then. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the reason why uh, they put that clause or that phrase in the constitutions that the southern boundary will be extended in the middle of the river and, and so on. This is the, the only <coughs> reason why I explanation that I can offer so far in, uh, with, regard, uh, with regard to that aspect. Okay. Yes. Now, <coughs> and now, mm -hmm. I've talked about the, 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 the doctrine of UT uh, Posidetis Juris. I've talked about the Cairo Declaration of uh, 1964. I've talked about the position of, uh, of, of the Constitutive Act, uh, mm -hmm. and we have ratified that uh, that uh, very important founding document of the uh, African Union. Mm -hmm. Then let me talk about um, Article 144 of the Namibian Constitution, which is very important. Mm -hmm. Article 144 says, unless <coughs> uh, it's provided Mm -hmm. for by the constitution or by act of parliament the general rules mm -hmm. of public international law mm -hmm. and international agreement mm -hmm. will be binding which are binding upon Namibia, under this constitution, it remains part, it, form, it forms part of the law of Namibia, which basically means that you have a constitution. Unless the constitution says something else, mm -hmm. or unless there is a law passed by parliament mm -hmm. which says something else, in the absence of a provision of the constitution or a provision under an act of parliament, in the absence of that, mm -hmm. the general rules of public international law and the international agreement mm -hmm. which are binding upon Namibia under the current constitution, mm -hmm. it forms part of the, the law of the Republic of Namibia. What does it that mean? It means the the UT Posidetis Juris that I talked about mm -hmm. is a principle of law, international law. Mm -hmm. The Constitutive Act of the AU, which says we must respect the boundary, mm. is part of the international law. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And it's part of the constitution. And we must respect that. Mm -hmm. So here we are talking about um, a system where we have to respect the international agreement which are binding on Namibia and the, the Agro-German Treaty which I, I, I referred to earlier on mm -hmm. is binding on Namibia and the position is the boundary between Namibia and South Africa mm -hmm. according to the Anglo-German Treaty of the 1st July 1890 mm -hmm. provides that the boundary, be, the land boundary between the two countries mm -hmm. is on the northern bank of the Orange River. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, Mr. Ipombo, in your views, which forum would you suggest the two countries may take this dispute for adjudication? Um, you see, um, negotiation. Mm -hmm. Why do I say so? I say so because uh, if you look at um, Article 96 of the Constitution of Namibia, it provides that uh, it has five sub clauses. Uh, I, th uh, I think um, 96 sub 3 or 4, it provides. Um, um, that Namibia must, or the, the, the state must promote uh, international corporations and peace and security, and it must um, respect uh, international agreements, and it must um, encourage um, the settlement of disputes um, through peaceful means. Now, you see, when there is a disagreement, between member states, mm -hmm. the route to follow is to engage the other party. Mm -hmm. That is now negotiation, um, as opposed to other means like arbitration or uh, taking the matter to to international forum like the SADC tribunal, of course, which doesn't. Uh, which, which has been suspended since, I think, 2007. Mm -hmm. um, and you cannot also take um, this matter um, to the International Court of Justice. You rather engage um, um, uh, the Pretoria administration uh, to see whether, uh, and, and try to persuade, um, uh, to persuade them uh, so that they change the opposition and then uh, that is the road to okay. go. Yes. And when did Namibia and South Africa engage each other on the Orange River boundary? Uh, Mr. Oseko, I, I remember um, the last serious engagement, uh, public in serious engagement, which I'm aware of, um, was in 2004. Mm -hmm. um, I was part of that um, negotiation. Uh, at national level, there were uh, preparatory discussions, um, which um, I have also attended. Mm -hmm. uh, a delegation was constituted to meet the South Africa, our South African counterparts. Um, remember. Uh, late comrade um, Tenya, who was um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, then was the leader of delegation. There were also some senior uh, government leaders, Minister Pohamba, uh, Brahmi Yambos, and others. We went to South Africa to meet the um, the delegation of South Africa, which was um, led by Dr. Kosazana Dlamini Zuma, there were several top leaders as well. Uh, Aziz Bahad, I remember, there was also um, uh, 
is uh, the Minister of, of I think, Environment at that time, uh, Pumile Fuka, something like that. So, so we had a discussion um, on this subject matter in Cape Town, uh, but unfortunately, um, there was no consensus. Mm -hmm. uh, but the two governments um, agreed to engage each other at a later stage. Uh, but however, um, I think the two governments were also engaged in other, um, probably attended to other responsibilities and so on. And I must tell you that unfortunately since um, the Cape Town uh, meeting in February 2004, um, I'm not aware of any uh, meeting which um, followed uh, that very meeting. So, uh, so unfortunately it ended in, in, uh, in a dis disagreement. Okay. Yes. So Mr. Pumbu, in your views, what is the way forward towards the resolution of this matter? Um, Ms. Mr. Osiku, I think the way forward must be that uh, our government here must really um, pursue uh, the negotiation on the land boundary, that is the Orange River boundary. Uh, it doesn't help us to have a constitution which provides that uh, our southern boundary must be in the middle of, of, of the Orange River, whereas in actual fact, that's not where the boundary is. Mm -hmm. And there is a dispute. And that dispute is, has never been resolved up to date. So, um, myself, I'm not, I don't believe in, in giving up. Okay. So, I believe the, the reason why uh, the founding uh, or the, arch the architecture of the constitution uh, of Namibia adopted um, that constitutional provision, uh, that's um, Article 1, sub Article 4, is to ensure that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the physical boundary is the middle of the river, which is not the case. So that negotiation needs to be followed up. We need to engage um, the government of South Africa. Um, and then we see at, at, the, at the political level. Mm -hmm. And once we thresh out all the differences, and perhaps we reach an agreement, and then we will probably need to, um, to, to renegotiate the, the treaty or to completely do away with it. Because once we reach an agreement that, look, this, the, middle of, the middle of the Orange River is now the physical boundary line. Mm -hmm. So then the, the treaty, it falls away. Mr. Ipumbu, do you have any other thing before we conclude this interesting interview? Well, I don't have um, uh, much to say about this, um, but I... I trust that uh, um, our government, uh, through the Ministry of uh, International Relations and Cooperation, uh, will try their, their level best to follow up the matter. I trust the leadership and I hope that uh, they will engage um, our South African, uh, but where they need assistance, not necessarily from the government, from maybe from outside. So um, um, I have no problem if they knock at my door and 
in, in, in engage me or uh, make me part of your delegation. Thank you. Thanks again, Mitsa Ipumbu, for sharing information on the Orange River boundary. That was Mr. Titus Ipumbu, a legal practitioner based in Wintuk, expressing his personal views on the subject matter. From my side, Kashinde I wish you a pleasant day. Until next time. Thanks again, Mr. Ipumbu, for sharing information on the Orange River boundary. That was Ms. Titus Ipumbu, a legal practitioner based in Wintook, expressing his personal views on the subject matter. From my side, Kashin Siku, I wish you a pleasant day. Until next time.